All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now today, down the beach, a beautiful sunny day in Australia down the beach. It's autumn, just one of those real pleasant, quiet days. Got the big canvas as usual, and at the same time, only palette knives and tons of oil paint. All right, so I've actually taped it here, and what I've done here is I've measured that horizon and taped it and got it absolutely straight. And now what I'll do is I'll put a bit of a horizon line in and then straight away peel it off, but that will get my levels perfect and set me up for the rest of the painting. Okay, what color is the horizon gonna be? I'll use a bit of ultramarine, a bit of white, obviously. What colour is it today? Yeah, maybe a little bit of Viridian green thrown in there. Keep going, that's good. Let's just have a look. Might go a bit darker than that by looks of it. It's very important to get this one pitched at the right key that you want. Then the rest of the painting can fall in place. That could be about it. That looks about right, yeah. Okay, so we'll just put that in. Now, like I said, it's just a quick thing, this tape. It'll be off before you know what. Just establish this horizon line and then we're into the painting. Set you up beautifully because it gives you that lovely straight line to work with. Keep it fairly thin for now. Alright, now this is the fun part, we get this off. Look at that. Drop this one in the bin. It's just a great way to establish, get things started. We've got that set up and the uh, camera's on, I had to check that. I'm not going to paint the picture, come out all this way and not have the camera going. Alright, so we've got that established now. Might just knock out up a bit of a burnt sienna with some of that blue, plenty of white. Little bit of magenta. Just going to put in the distant haze on the horizon. There's a bit of a salt haze on the horizon, so just want to knock that in. It's kind of a keyed back look like that. Let me just have a look first what we've got. It's probably about it. We keep it fairly dark for now. Because uh, it really gives the feeling of a salty, hazy horizon if you do that. And let you establish some good highlights afterwards. Now I won't actually touch, I won't touch the blue yet. I'll bring it down close to the blue, but not quite touch. I'll bring it together later on as the picture progresses. There we go, look at that, just put that in like so. I'll try and keep out of the way of the camera and this palette. I really don't wanna get messed up in the wet palette either, so. There we go, let's just get this going, look at that. It's all coming together. Take a little bit of time here because this really sets up the key of the painting, gets everything straight, gets it all ready to go for all the uh, big chunky work. Okay, so we'll just keep... Keep putting that on, and then we'll go to the next phase in a minute. Right, it's not too bad. Just get rid of a few of those whites as I go. Trying to keep out of the way of the camera. Yes, I go. Okay, what's the next layer? Right. 
That was ultramarine blue and all that sort of stuff. I might use a bit of phthalo blue, a real strong blue with a slight green twang to it. Add a little bit of yellow oak and it really sends it off on a green. I don't want to go too green, but there is a little bit of green on the horizon there, just a touch. You can go too far sometimes, but just a little bit. Let's see what we've got. What I'll do is uh, get some of this paper towel. Just have a clean pellet knife. This stuff's getting rare as hen's teeth at the moment, paper towel. <laughs> we all know why, so I don't need to talk about that. Anyway, right. Yellow ochre and burnt sienna. And white. Just mixing up a nice high key tone. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna and titanium white. Mix that with a little bit of that sky colour. Just to put a bit of a haze into that sky because there's a lot of haze on the horizon. <laughs> and a few cows going past. Flat stick. Best way to enjoy nature. Flat out. Whoa, what happened here? That one can come down here. It's all happening now, isn't it? There we go. That wasn't holding anything anyway. That was something from earlier. As I was setting up. Just get that in. So those two are kind of mixed, half mixed together and creating A nice atmospheric haze and I'm just going to pull that coastal grey sort of colour into it so that they come together like so I'll go a bit more blue now. Use the ultramarine blue again because that thalo blue is wickedly strong. Use a little bit of thalo but with the ultramarine now that thalo has lost a lot of its intensity because ultramarine is a red blue and thalo is a green blue and red and green together cancel each, up, cancel each other out. So. Just gets rid of some of that crazy intensity. So just pulling that together like so. Oh, what fun to be down the coast on a beautiful sunny day, right? Bit more blue, go a bit darker, eh? Bit more of the phthalo, bit more of the ultramarine. Picks up a beautiful brew. Look at that beautiful stuff, okay. Now there's gonna be a bit of cloud in this composition too, so I'm just gonna, let's have a look what we've got here. There's a little bit of high level cloud coming in, I'm seeing, so that could be a good thing. Could add a little bit of a, I'll put this down, I don't really need that in my hand. That high level cloud, provided it doesn't block the sun, could add a bit of interest. It kind of comes in here, scoops around like so. So I'm enjoying that, I'll go with that, hang on. Look at that burn sienna and yellow ochre. White. Then Sienna again. Just trying to mix up something that I can use as that cloudy haze in the distance. So we'll kind of go in here. Shoot up that way. It's kind of coming down in there, going across there. A bit more burnt Sienna in the mix because that cloud really is becoming part of the uh, picture now, I'm noticing it's really there, so I want it, it's a good thing. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that sky, hazy cloud effect. Go 
got a few flies and bugs coming into the picture. It's just that had a different effect altogether. <laughs> okay, so we just put that in. Just getting a feel of what's going on there. A bit more yellow and white now as they get higher. Slightly high actually up here. Together. All right, let's get back into filling in the rest of that blue part of the sky. It's ultramarine blue and white. Getting through that white pretty quick. It's just one of those things that happens with, uh, with white, especially on a beach in a high key painting like this, you're really gonna need a lot of white. You stick that in. Look at that. Lovely. Darker. More blue. Ultramarine blue, the red blue, with a little bit of magenta, which will make it even slightly redder as it goes up. You can probably see as it's going up, it's just getting that little bit redder and darker. So you stick that in. Quick smart. Coming along, she's coming along. Oop, what do we got here? A little bit of the old phalo I got in the mix then, which I didn't want. Didn't want to be darker than that. Here we go, look at that. That's better. Lovely dark mix. Plenty of deep blue. Lovely deep blue, paint around, uh, temporarily just paint around the thing that's holding the whole thing onto the easel, the clamp. Ugh. All right, I might just stand back for a minute and have a look. We're getting there, so. Next, I've got to work out where I want the waves and the surf and all that to go. So, first I'll analyse some of the colours. All right, I can see Viridian Green will obviously go well. So will Yellow Ochre. Yeah, he's a bit keyed down though, so a bit of Ultramarine Blue to knock it back. Yeah, a little bit richer than that, so we'll go for some more blue, a bit less white, you see. More blue and green. Right, a little bit more yellow ochre. It just needs a little bit of an olive, olive touch to it. Uh-huh. Something along those lines. I've just got to work out my levels and whatever I'm doing here. Some burnt sienna and yellow ochre, I notice. That water's drawing back there, that's where the wet sand's going to be. I'll just put that in now because I can see it happening. You've always got to keep moving around the canvas and working with what you're observing. Get that in like so. Sienna, yellow ochre, white. Okay, let me just stand back and have a look at something. Just trying to get a few levels correct where I want things to be. Sand will be there somewhere, the wet sand. Here's another car. 
it's all happening on this beach. <laughs> Just trying to get everything in at once and then work it out later on. <laughs> work it out as you go. The good thing about the knife is you can put paint on very quickly. Thick paint that is, not thin. You can put thin on also, but if you want to get a lot of paint on quickly, a knife is a great way to do it. more yellow ochre and burnt sienna and white. A bit more yellow ochre than that. A bit less burnt sienna. Get it all in, see that? the board covered. Might lighten up a little bit. The sand's getting a little bit drier as it gets closer to me, thankfully. <laughs> Wouldn't want it to be getting wetter. All right, so that's a bit more yellow ochre and white with a little bit less burnt sienna. In, get it all coloured in. Plenty of white, plenty of chunkiness also up here in the uh, foreground. It can be as chunky as you like up here because it's all right up close in your face like sand is when you're right standing on the beach. The thing you notice is a beautiful chunky beach sand so stick it in nice and chunky. Just got to get around this thing. Take my way around that. Just have a look for a minute. Getting there, getting there now. We'll get straight into this beautiful blue reflection of the wet sand where it meets the water and the uh, just that reflective, beautiful wet sand on the beach itself. A little bit more phalo in that. Set that tone correct, maybe a bit more white. Let's get it in there. Get it all covered. Look at that, look at the way it spreads. Light tone. Mix, 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 mix. Okay. Got something going there. The wet sand. Now, a little bit of sky blue mixed in because there's a lot of pale blue reflecting into the wet water from the sky as well. A bit more blue in it. Stick it in here, stick it in there. Okay, I'll stand back and have a look, eh? See what I've got. 
getting there, getting there. Okay, now, some of the waves themselves that are breaking, so, a bit of an olive color today. Just gotta work out where I want my major wave to be. So that's uh, mainly yellow ochre and viridian green to get that color. It's gonna vary a lot with all the, the sand is mixing up as the wave breaks, you get a bit of the sand color. Mixes in. A lot of variety goes on there. Yeah, there's a bit of sand coming in like that into the wave. It always is a nice look. together a little bit so there's a little bit less white highlights. Just getting it blended. What a lovely day. Pulling through. Let's have a look. Gonna soften some of this sky now, just a little bit, get it blending better. Just getting it all, all the different layers that I put in, getting them blending into each other. To get a beautiful smooth consistency in the sky. through to soften that beautiful high level cloud. Have a car go past, no worries. There you go, just keep on blending those together. Get a bit of paint on my hand here, hang on. Let's pull that horizon more into each other. It's all about blending, those subtle tones. A beautiful hazy day down the beach, just bringing all those subtle colours together. Pull it down to the horizon line now if I can. Them to meet. I'll just get rid of this paper towel and get a new one out. I'll wipe it clean each time, bring it down to the level that I want. Wiping the knife clean so I can start with clean effect. It's another vehicle, or the same one, I don't know, it could be, who knows. Bring that down, get rid of that white. <laughs> Pulling the dark blue up to with the other side of the knife now. Wipe it clean. Pulling 
that dark blue horizon up to the sky level. Let's have a look, eh? Smears down here. What, what, what? Blend, blend, blend. Burying the marks here and there. Flies are having a bit of fun with me, aren't they? What I might do is paint some of that beautiful white. I've left the white canvas exposed, but I'm going to thicken it up with a bit of a Chunky oil, chunky oil paint, white, lovely. Paint some of that beautiful surf. Because the sun's shining on that surf, there's just a twang of that sun colour in it, so I've got a little bit of yellow ochre just to give that kind of bright sunny day effect. Okay, so, I'm just gonna lightly put it on where I reckon I want my waves. to watch the waves for a while just to get the feeling of what they're doing. Just feel those waves. They sort of collapse on themselves, if you know what I mean, like a wave. The white stands up, but then it gets too tall and collapses, so the edge, quite often, is a bit higher, if you know what I'm saying, where it's breaking, because the rest of it's falling in. Right, let's have a look. through and soften. Also get some of those bugs out. Clean knife. Very clean knife. I've just got a bit more towel to get it cleaner. What we got out? Okay. Uh oh, a whole swarm of bugs have come through. <laughs> Landed in the painting, the little beggars. There we just pull through to soften. Wipe the knife clean. It's that time of year, I don't know, it's quite often this time of year I get bugs. Bugs can be an extra an extra thing to have to uh, deal with when you're painting plain air. Oh well. I guess it's all part of it. Just adding some of that beautiful earthy tones that is getting mixed in with the busted up waves. Knife on the edge. What I'm going to do is keep this reflection extremely, extremely thin in contrast with the thickly painted everything else. Pulling a bit of paint off there to get it slightly thinner. Let's just do a quick bin run. Just sticking a little bit of the uh, 
wet sand as it's peeking through. Back and have a look at that one. Get some lovely white paint, stick some beautiful thick paint on, eh? Beautiful thick paint. Here we go. Just feeling the waves, what they're doing on the day. Just with a knife on the edge. Some of those beautiful waves in those real small ones. Reflections. Beautiful wet reflections in the sand. waves up here put their reflection in a slightly keyed down version for what they are a slightly weaker version Let's have a look at that Gonna soften here Add a bit more yellow ochre and white. I just want to make this foreground sand nice and chunky in comparison. Like I was saying earlier, really pile on the paint, get it all lovely and chunky. So you can really feel like you're standing in that wet sand. How lovely would that be? Well, not wet sand, the dry sand, you know, down the beach, it's all just sandy and wet. And fantastic, really, but. And when you're in amongst the sand, in amongst the, with your shoes off, it always feels really thick and chunky, so it's good to stick it on like that. Contrasting by the uh, extremely soft reflections here. Let's pull up to get some of those classic offshore breezes going that the surf is absolutely love. Soften up. Wipe it clean. Lightly pull through to get a real softness. Trying to blend that sky a little bit better so it falls back into the distance. I 
trying to get the feeling of that high level cloud twisting and turning as it goes. Wiping the knife clean each time. Might just go for a little bit more towel. Get it all clean and lovely. Random marks here and there. about putting subtleties in now where you want them and getting rid of the odd bug here and there. The bugs are coming in thick and strong so I'll have to stop soon simply just to uh, not have too many bugs in the painting. All right well that's about it. Got the big impression. Lovely day down the beach with the surf, big chunky wet sand, nice whole level cloud the feeling of a lovely day down the beach. Just putting a few bits in here as I see them. Right, so a lovely day down the beach and the keynote of this painting for me was getting that sand really reflective, the wet sand and smooth and flat so there was hardly any thickness to that paint, it's very thin, contrasting the chunkiness and that gives you that really contrasting effect in a painting and it's always good to have contrast. Light against dark, warm against cool, hard against soft, or thin paint against thick paint. Thick paint. Alright, well we'll get the camera off and we'll have a close look and all the rest. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thumbs up, forward it on to your friends and all the great stuff. Just spread the good word in general. All right, till next time, see you later. Okay, let's go in and have a closer look at what we've got. Now, as I said before, the concept in my mind about this painting was getting really good contrast in textures. You've got the thick texture of the white surf, contrasting the thin reflective waters, the wet sand, contrasting again the chunkiness, the chunky style of the dry sand to really give it a separation between the two or three. <laughs> anyway, I find that a contrast in a painting always builds a stronger painting and uh, this is the way I've gone about it today. Thick white surf, same deal, the clouds and whatever in the sky are a lot thinner to make them recede into the distance. All up, uh, fairly good effect. All right, no 